Oh, hello there. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, we can't do the Golden Globes. We only we only present the Oscars. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotta go, gotta go. Hello. This is the Superhero Hub. Up for discussion. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. <laughs> and today we're going to be discussing... The top five moments of Arrow. That was a great opening. Yeah, I thought so. Strong. <laughs> I was we'll start with number five. What is it? <laughs> with number five. Why wouldn't we start with number one? Well, you want to start with the rest? We always start that way. Okay, we'll start with number one then. Yeah. What's number one? Number one moment, I think, for me and a lot of the viewers right now who, who are in their hundred thousands watching the show, well, I would have to say, <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say. <laughs> The Raish Al Ghul fight, the episode The Climb, and that would have to be is on the mountaintop. He climbs it. It's a long episode. It's all leading up to it. Gets to the top. Raish Al Ghul topless. I mean that that that's not so much the best moment, but like he gets there, gives a speech. League of Assassin tops off. Keep the blades. I'll use them. I'll use them when you finished with them. They go one on one. The fight was sick. The kind of the, the choreography. I, I hate to be cliche, but like, oh, the choreography was so great. So I like the fighting was great. I like that the sword work. How he just like Rachel Gould made it look effort, effortless to slap Oliver Queen. I mean, I mean that's how it should be. This guy's like 400 years old. Then this new kid walks in thinking it's something special. You're damn right. I don't think he even got one hit on him, did he? He literally just, just slapped him within about 10 seconds. Both the blades were off him. On his knees. Whoosh, straight through. Off the mountain, mate. He could have easily just left him there to bleed to death. But it was like, you want to know what? I'm not letting you off easy. Kicks him straight off the edge of the mountain. That's how it's got to be done. You feel me? Yeah, it was well staged, it was well shot. It, um, the fight was cool. They did a good, he did get battered, but I think they did a good job of showing that he was... Arrow was entirely capable of fighting someone, but he was just completely outclassed. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It was cool. Him getting stabbed looked great. The yeah. way he just nonchalantly went over the cliff was great. It was a great moment. It was also... A sign of the decline what's to come for the next couple of years, though, because the it set up something the show can never kind of live up to. Mm. The pro- the problem, uh, the, the resolution, the resolution after it, how how it turns out is not dead, was full on batty crease. So I mean, but I mean for that moment in itself, the encapsulation, those last couple minutes of the climb. From the moment him reaching the top of the cliff to the blade being thrown into the ground and Rachel Gould walking off in the credits. Solid, solid moment. Let's go straight into number two. What's popping? Okay. I can't remember what's number two. Jesus Christ. Come on. My co anchor, everyone. The second moment has to be uh, another stabbing. Yep, you guessed it. The death oh, wow. of. Moira, yes. Yeah, the death of Moira. So you remember her first name, nothing else. Right, okay. now we'll showcase this moment. We'll, ha- we'll look at it from Oliver Queen with his dodgy leg. I think it was his dodgy leg. At the end of the gala, we've got Mama revealing that she knows he is the Green Arrow. I've known, I've known since season one. She didn't actually use them words, but I do believe chronologically she did say she knew since the undertaking that that night when it all went to hash. Now we had that moment. Very proud, very proud, Oliver, that you go out murdering people. I'm really happy you're a serial killer, and I like your outfit. Then they get into the car. Moira's about to drop a bombshell. Thea, Malcolm Merlin ain't dead. You know what I mean? He's back in the hizzle. But unfortunately, (coughs) car crash. And then we find ourselves in a clearing. We've got Deathstroke without his mask, standing over. Same predicament Oliver was in with Shadow and Sarah except now it's his mum and his sister who's gonna die? Moira. (laughs) Straight through the gut dead. Shocking moment very sad. You've got Oliver on the floor catatonic 
uh, Thea crying. So, your opinions of it? How did you feel? Did it you was... cry? Did you cry? No, but uh, it was the it was the culmination <laughs> of a couple of years worth of build up. It was the comeuppance that Moira deserved. Mm. She had done a she had pretty much uh, she was done with you know, there's nothing more anyone could have done with her so but her either... character arc was complete she had done a lot of horrible things and need to be punished for them um, as a as a, as a, as a quote unquote normal person anyway you know Malcolm's obviously done a lot of wrong too but he's a super villain so he gets to live for a while but mm-hmm. as a normal person she deserved punishment for what she'd done and Deathstroke needed to do something in the present. We've seen the flashbacks, we've seen the stuff with, with Shadow and her death and... Who? Shadow and her death and... What did you say the first time? I might said Shadow. We saw the build-up to that, we've seen everything around that, but all that happened in the flashbacks made something in the present to establish Deathstroke as a viable threat. Yeah, and he had to, to do something shocking and he pulled it out the sack. There it was. Great. So we'll move on to moment three, which was. I've no idea. I, ju- I just like it when you say that. The well, I do know this one. Oh, go on now, what is it? The death of the Black Canary. Uh, which Black Canary is that? Because sometimes the lines can be blurred. They can. The first one, Sarah. Oh, the first one. You mean Laura Lance? No, she wasn't the first Black Canary uh, in okay. the show. Sarah was. Oh, uh, uh, I thought you were... Because when you said first one, I thought you meant comics. Okay. Uh, the death of Sarah Land. <laughs> That's not a lot. Her name's Dino, you dummy. I'm talking about Sarah. I know that. I'm talking about Laura the moment was, in the show. Laura was not the first black canary in the comics, but her name's not lot. It's not important, anyway. Yeah, but her name's Laurel, Laurel no, Dino Lance. So no, her name's she... Dino. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go to the diner and get a milkshake? Um, so anyway, we'll get back to that. Uh, a heartwarming conversation. Sister on sister. Dirty mind. Sister on sister conversation. You know, up for discussion. Uh, so happy you're back, Sarah. You know, I've enjoyed this time we've spent together. It's been cool. I'm just going to go down the stairs now. I'll race you to the bottom. And who won? <laughs> Sarah Lance did, except unfortunately she had an arrow in her gut. Multiple, I think. She licked her about three hours, were not she? And she dropped off the cliff. Very, very sad. I mean, the gaudy kind of church music while she was falling was a bit like... But, I mean, it should have just been silent. should have just had a go... And a nice little splat at the end, you know what I mean? So, very sad. Again, it drew a tear from this... Uh, viewer, but I mean it was very um, it was unexpected and obviously the run for the majority of the season was like who did it, not that anyone really cared but I mean it was like a big thing I, I, I wasn't really bothered to uh, I, it didn't really matter who did it really because in the end it was kind of just again it was kind of just wrapped up you know what I mean uh, Thea did it, spoiler Thea did it, but it's like it was all Malcolm's fault. So it's like, ah, oh, she was forgiven. I'm pretty sure Malcolm was forgiven for doing it. And then obviously she didn't stay dead long. She had a little bath, had a couple bubbles, and then she's right as rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, ultimately it was entirely lame because all the follow-up was lame. I think they just wanted to come in strong for the premiere, so they thought we'll do that. We'll, we'll, we'll... The moment itself was was surprising. Mm. I didn't see it coming, it kind of... That's why it's number three. Yes, they've killed, you know, they killed Moira, but this was the first time someone on the team had really um, suffered and it kind of illustrated the character. You know, it's not a game. To our lives at risk. The... Exactly. If you mess about with bows and arrows, street crime, guns and bullets, you get dead. Yeah, I'm sure the likable character at that point. That Adela come in, and I think it's fair to say at that point she was more popular than Laurel was. She is, she was probably like the, the the decent female lead. She was like the female lead. Everyone else was a bit flaccid. Yeah, well, I mean, at that point, um, I think people still liked Felicity. You know, they aren't quite if they hooked up with 
fairly new I can't remember if they were together yet but were they? no they weren't because that was the season oh wait that was season 3 episode 1 wasn't it yeah so I don't think they had I don't think they had because the the I think there was from there there was it was I think it blossomed from there because you remember in the season two finale where he kind of had Felicity held hostage, Deathstroke had her and was like, because um, uh, Oliver like mentioned on the tape, oh this is a girl I love, but then it was like kind of brushed off at the end of the episode like because they're uh, on the banks of like Lian Yu and she was like they were talking about it and it was like yeah I just said it for the sake of saying it so we could do the plan and it weren't really discussed further than that so we go into season 3 episode 1 and it wasn't really discussed at that point so I don't think they were together so whether, the, whether they were or they weren't it was definitely early days so she was still likeable she was probably the female lead at that point so Sarah was expendable she was the obvious one to kill they were it seemed they were still invested in Laurel and building the rest at that point although it seems that obviously they changed their mind in a couple of years time but they went with it I think it was a good idea the execution did live, live up to it like the the Ray Shadow Ghoul fight but the, the moment itself was cool okay so what's number four uh, number four would be the big reveal, season one. The guy in the black mask, who is the Dark Archer. But the thing was, I mean, it didn't deserve a higher place, and I'll tell I'll tell the viewers why. So the problem is it wasn't like the dark archer was running around for the whole of the season doing stuff i think he only popped up for pretty much like one episode one or two episodes so you know you were aware that there was some guy going around he was the dark archer you could pretty much guess it was like a merlin like character obviously you had malcolm merlin himself lurking around but like the antithesis of that would have been like hit him in his you either have Malcolm lurking around and then play it as a shock when it turns out he's a dark archer even though like that there's only like one of two people it could have been or you have like Malcolm Merlin like pop up like in like one or two episodes so you know he's around and then have the dark archer running around for the rest of the season doing stuff and then like it reveals that they're one and the same so I mean they went with Malcolm Merlin lurking and then obviously in that one episode you had them come face to face, green and black. Oliver gets slapped up again, you know what I mean? Because he'd been going around for the season putting criminals in their place. But it's pretty like, you look at it, the way Oliver kills is like execution style. The majority of the time when he's going around picking off people on that list, it was a one arrow thing, no messing about, done. And then when he actually comes up against, that was like one of the proper times where he actually came up against someone. He actually had to fight him apart from Chen Ah Wei. But apart from that, someone he actually had to fight and uh, as with Rachel Ghoul, he was mullered. You know, broken ribs, slapped up, hurt, pride, boom, put in his place. And then we have the scene walking down the, the corridor, whipping off the mask. And huzzah, who is it? Captain Jack Harkness. Mm, yeah, which is, I think that's part of the, what made it slightly obvious. Like, well, I think, I think, I think we, we can't really, I think having the moment kind of, ties into the, the reveal in itself that there was a Malcolm Merlin because as soon as John Barrowman pops up you got to know he's going to be somebody mm. and before Malcolm was revealed I think a lot of people myself included just assumed that Tommy would be the Merlin from the comic book so do you think that would have been better if Tommy yeah. turned out to be Merlin or because I think people maybe thought with throwing John Barrowman, he's a little older. Maybe maybe people are going to think because he's a little older, he's not going to be up to it. You know what I mean? I think that was what they were looking for. I think subliminally they were kind of hoping that people would think it was more Tommy. I think it would have been way more shocking because of how close him and Oliver were. So for him right, to have been Merlin, the Dark Archer, I think that would have been probably been more shocking. See, I don't think it would. I mean, you can't remember it's hard for us to do now because we're, we're five years 
years down the line. But at the time, with Arrow, we were so close to Smallville coming out, everybody thought Lex Luthor from Smallville when the show started. That's how, how everyone thought it was going to be. They were going to start off friends, and then it's going to be a divide. It was obvious that Tommy would be Merlin. That, that's what everyone thought was going to happen. The fact that Malcolm pops up was the surprise, and it did make a difference. So I don't know. I think it was better. I think it was more shocking. Okay. And I, I think it, you know, I have no, no, no problem with the actor, it's no disrespect, but I think Tom, uh, John Barrowman works more as a viable threat, maybe because we know, you know, Torch would bring that one in. Well, no, I think in terms of the plot for the rest of the season, it works out that he was Merlin because he's had life experience. If you got this, like, young 30 year old kid popping about, it's like, ha- ha- how could it come out that he had the plot to like destroy the city what had happened for him to actually do it so I think it was pretty obvious it was going to be Merlin because he's got the life experience he's gone through stuff yes, you know but, what I mean what, but what, what I mean, is, what what I, mean is, I agree with you it's, like I said it's when Barrowman pops up you know he's going to have a bigger role but my point is before Malcolm ever showed up it seemed obvious to everyone even though it turned out we were wrong it seemed well, obvious to everyone that Tommy would be a villain well you look at it like I think John Barrowman was like in the first episode in the back of the car. He literally popped up in the first episode. It's just you didn't well, we actually didn't know, know who he was, though, right? Yeah. And then when you had him like you had him at the like dinner table saying, "Oh yeah, I think he should call himself the Green Arrow." Mm-hmm. That was a good one. So now we'll move on to number five, which what was. You got me. It was in the season two finale <laughs> with Deathstroke where they were fighting and then you obviously had that, you rectified that, you go back to Leon Yu and is in the cell and is like, you wanna know what, Slade? After everything we've been through, all the experiences we've had, you wanna know what, if it weren't for you, like training me and then becoming a threat and showing me the person I am uh, I wouldn't be the hero I am today. So for that, Slade, I'd like to thank you. That was a, a humbling moment, a very real moment, I think, for Oliver Queen himself, because I think he'd looked back at everything he'd done, all the good that comes from murdering people, and he thought, you all know what, Slade, if it weren't for you breaking my balls, I wouldn't be the hero I am today. So thanks, buddy. Thank you for that, for making me a murderer. Well, personally, I think the show was better when he was a murderer, but the moment, yes, it, it was quite cool. There was, season two is definitely still the best season by a country mile, and Slay was the best villain. Um, you know, it's not only that season, it's the the flashbacks from the, from the first season as well, all the way up, all that time, all that progress building the character. Whether you agreed with where it went or not, obviously, like I say, I don't particularly like it, but... Why not? Why don't you like it? No, no, not the moment. Let me finish. Whether you agree with Oliver stopping, killing, becoming the Green Arrow, a more heroic version of himself or not, you can't say they didn't earn it. They definitely did. And that, that moment was the combination of that. They built up to it. They did a good job of it. The execution afterwards, yeah, not so great, but the two years. Slade, that's the thing with Slade. Though we got to know him, we got to see him as a decent bloke, we got to see why he became who he became, in the way you understood why he was doing what he was doing. That's a problem kind of with every villain we've had since then. You know, even Rachel Gould, especially the um, Damien Duck. Damien Duck, yeah. You know, we don't care about them as much. We don't know as much about them. There isn't any depth, there isn't any real relationship with with Oliver like there was even with Merlin. And that moment was earned because of two years' worth of episodes. You know, if he had that same moment with with Damien Duck or Ray Shango, it would have felt empty. Mm-hmm. So that's why I made the list. So let's move on to honourable mentions. Um, 
for me, it'd have to be at the end of Three Ghosts. You've got the kind of backdoor pilot for Flash, and then it's got to be okay. This might be a bit of a cop out, but when Barry got hit by lightning and became the Flash, because that was the first time you'd seen it in the whole Arrowverse, is in that last episode of you guessed it, Arrow. So for me, that counts. Obviously, it's kind of like. It, it is an arrow moment. It is an arrow moment because it happens yeah, in arrow first. Yeah, but who cares? You don't really care until the flash starts. Well, no, because you yeah, yeah, you spent two on. episodes yeah. getting to know Barry. Yeah, exactly, it's two episodes. It's nothing. Yeah, yeah but I, he featured heavily. We read comic books, so we care a little because we know who the flash is. But if you if you haven't and you just watch the show to watch the show, then after two episodes, some bloke gets struck by lightning. What do you care? You don't. And the flash made it important. But yeah, you know, uh, honorable mentions are probably the the other Black Canary dying. After three seasons of being incredibly annoying, I think the fourth season she was probably one of the better written characters. She was a lot more likable. They finally got into a part, got into a point where you could like her, and then they killed her off. How did but, that make you feel? Did you cry at that? No, but oh, the moment itself was alright. Yeah, and the build up to the surprise and. I kind of felt bad for Lance for losing another kid. Mm -hmm. All Oliver's fault again. Yeah. Uh, not really. Right. So I'll throw in an honourable mention. Yeah. It will be when Oliver's just coming home. A very hard day, you know what I mean. Comes in. Oh, uh, hello, mother. Who is your dinner guest? Just happens to be a certain one eyed bandit, if you excuse the pun. Mm. Mm. Tell us more. So I think Slade Wilson had been revealed. No, not not him. The other one. Who? Deadshot. No, I'm joking. I was doing my death joke. I was gonna say I forgot something. <laughs> yeah, I think. When Slade did Deadshot Wilson... go to his house for dinner? Oh, exactly. Hopefully never. I think Slade Wilson had been revealed the episode before in the present. Um, this was the first time we saw. An invasion of Oliver's life. You know, just Merlin was always called kind of on the outside, but this is the first time someone met his family, was in his house. Mm -hmm. and the threat was very, very real. A clear and present danger, if you will, if you excuse the pun, present. Oh. It's a pretty decent movie, though. Back to the TV show. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> I think the scene played well as well. You know, um, Slade was clearly threatening, whilst appearing charming. Um, I like the update of the look, the update to his look as well. You know, looking slightly older, the grey. Yeah. Go on, tell me more. What uh, do you think? I was just perplexed why you said I like the update to his look, and then just did that to yourself. I was oh, thinking, why is he doing? I think that had him in. You, you like his slicked back hair, yeah. No, that's um, quite cool. Uh, I think another good moment for me, I mean, yeah, we're bumming around the kind of Deathstroke stuff, but for me, a good moment was when um, uh, the fight between Deathstroke and Deathstroke, Billy Wintergreen and Slade Wilson, that was a good one where he juked him through the eye as well. I thought that was good. Generally, the fight sequences, maybe not so much now, but like up to about season three and a half, like the fight sequences in Arrow was always kind of good. Now they look kind of, um, they look too choreographed. You know what I mean? But back then, I think I put, think that's when the improvement in that this season. Yeah. But definitely for a couple of years, they got pretty blame. Um, Shadow's death as well. I thought it was quite good. Yeah, I like that as well. Um, Another one I'd have to throw in would have to be uh, the invasion episode where they all kind of faced up to their demons. You've got the 100th episode, so you've got to show love. You've got um, John Diggle against like the the Pooper Trooper Hive men. You had Ray Palmer against one of the Murakura so soldiers. You had Thea up against Malcolm Merlin. You had Oliver against... Was Oliver up against Deathstroke or was Sarah up against Deathstroke? Uh, I think Oliver was against Deathstroke in 
wasn't she up against um, Mal- um, Damien Dark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought that was pretty good. I like the see that was a good fight sequence because you had o- Oliver like shoot the arrow over her catching it and then like stab. I thought that was decent. I like the kind of fights where it kind of all kind of converts together. Like each one is kind of doing their bit. Like in the Avengers when they're fighting in the battle and it's kind of all crossing over like each of them together and they're all kind of interacting with each other during battle. I like that sort of stuff. So for Oliver to kind of, it was like a tag team thing. Like shoot the arrow, catch it. That was awesome. So that just about wraps up this episode. There were your top five moments. There were, as voted by the fans, there were the honourable mentions. Them, <laughs> Those were the honourable mentions. I've been Samuel. I've been Matt. You know where we're at, the Superhero Hub. See you in the next episode. See you there.